Hello, maths fans. I am back with Steve from Black Pen, Red Pen. Hello, Steve. With the, he's super excited, as you can tell, to do the second part of our Pretend Oxford interview. So in the first video, we talked about Gabriel's horn and the, the paradox of having a finite volume and an infinite surface area. And Steve did really, really well on this question. Uh, I think we can all agree he, he's performing brilliantly so far. So in the second half of the interview, I've, I've dug out a really challenging question uh, from many, many years ago in sort of the archives of the Oxford interview questions. It's going to be a challenge. It's going to be tough. But, you know, these interviews are meant to be. And uh, hopefully, like with the first question, we'll have a lot of fun doing it. So, Steve, are you feeling ready? I am trying to. Yes. <laughs> are you more nervous or less nervous this time? I will say more nervous. <laughs> okay, so yeah, because I think because you know there's so much riding on it now, you've done so well in the first one, it's all come down to this super old school question now. What we're going to um, think about is um, to try to evaluate an infinite sum. So first of all, if we were to consider the sum of 1 over n, where n goes through the integers from 1 to infinity. Okay, well, let me just write this down. I have a little marker shortage recently, so <laughs> 1 over n. All right, so this right here goes to infinity. It diverges, yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, and then if we were to do uh, 1 over n squared, uh -huh. then do you know what that one would equal? Yes. I happen to know that this right here becomes pi squared over 6. Excellent, yes. That's my favorite um, series. The, the tattoo on my arm here is actually a geometric representation of that problem. So this is zero, and then this is one, plus one quarter, one ninth, and then the end, the dotted line is pi squared over six. Whoa, that's so cool, <laughs> wow. So I absolutely love that problem. It's my, one of my favorite results in all of maths. So we need to know that the one over n squared is finite. That is the only fact about it we need, which is quite clearly true, because you've told us it's equal to pi squared over six. Now, going back to one over n, we want to do the same sum, but now we want to take only the prime numbers. Oh, okay. So let's see, we'll write down the sum as n equals p. Well, actually, I will just write it as this. You want the, all the primes, right? So I'll just put down o yeah. p prime, o p prime like this. I think that should be okay, and one over p. Yes, and so we want to try and work out the answer to this question. We want to work out the the value of this sum. Oh, man. I guess a starting point might be, do you have any idea what the answer might be? I am suspecting this right here diverges because I, to be honest, I read about this before. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, it diverges, it, yeah. No, you're right, no, yeah, that's, that's, that's fine. We're going to try and show that. So you are correct. This is also going to be infinity. Um, and we're gonna try and show this. Um, through, through what I think is a really nice uh, method using the um, fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Okay. So could you tell us all what the fundamental theorem of arithmetic says? Pretty much like all the numbers can be decomposed into products of primes. Exactly. So if I were to give you a number n, you could write it as p1, p2, p3, p4, etc. up to some number. Let's say, let's say it was um, p1 to the n1, p2 to the n power of n2, because these, of course, could have different powers up to pk to the nk. Sure, okay. And as you've said, this is a unique decomposition. There is a slight simplification that we could make here. So, so in this particular form, we have all of these powers n1, n2, nk, etc. Now, if we wanted to reduce those powers to just be uh, 1, mm -hmm then do you know a way that we can simplify this formula so that all of the primes are taken to the power one and then there's some term left at the end? Some terms, we can factor things out maybe? Mm-hmm. And then you want, you are allowed to have things at the end? Yes, so, so, so the thing at the end doesn't have to necessarily be a prime number. Okay. So we just look at all this and then we just factor out, for example, from here we can say factor out p1 to the n1 minus 1 power 
right, factor that out and then just put that at the end. And then we can do the same thing for the other factors as well. So I think that's how we can do it. And I can write that down. So I said P1 purposely already as one and then P2 and then purposely write that as one and then so on, so on, so on. Uh, here we have PK and here is still one. And then at the end here, I will have to make things up. Well, make, make them up, right? of course. So this is N1 minus one. And then same thing up to PK and K minus one. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Now, um, given that the numbers N1, N2 up to NK, they can be um, they can be one of two types of number. So they could be odd or even. As an example, take um, let's just say N1 was equal to two two M plus one. Sure. And if we do that, then this right here will be even. And on the other yep. hand, if this was odd, so if this was odd, this would be even. If this is even, then this will be odd. Mm -hmm. Now, what we can potentially do, thinking about this odd and even parity, is you can say, well, I'm going to make all of the numbers in the red can all be written as square numbers. For example, if n1 is uh, 2m plus 1, then when we subtract 1, we have p1 to the 2m, which is p1 to the m, all squared. Yes, I agree. Yes. Yeah, OK. And then and if, if any of the other numbers, um, so if one of the powers is even, then we can just exclude it from our list and take the whole thing into the red bracket. Ah, I see, I see, I see. So if this was even in the first place, we should not have done that. Yes, so that would just be to the zero, and then all of the other powers would be inside the bracket. I see, okay. So, so what we can really say, in fact, this is, this is telling us that we have some prime numbers at the start, so your black numbers, we have some numbers there, which will all be to the power one. So it might not be the full list. So let's call them uh, P, PI1, PI2, up to PIK, for example. Okay. P. Because we don't know, like we've just discussed, we don't know that every number is present there, but they will all be to the power one. That's the important thing. I see. And then what would we be left with in the red bracket? What is the simplest way of writing that number in the red bracket? Uh... Oh, man, the index. I would just write the S down thing to the second power in that case, right? Perfect, yeah. So let's call it K squared. Okay. It's a square number, well done, yeah. So this is just, let's call it K squared. Okay, so we'll just multiply this guy by some K to the second power. So K is probably, if, you know, if, if N is a large number, K is going to also be a pretty large number. But, yes. you know, it doesn't matter. It's definitely a square number. And we've, yes. and we've considered odd and even powers, so this is always true. So both of these two statements are completely correct. So we can break it down into prime factors, or we can have prime numbers to the power one, and then a square number. Yes, okay. This now has this factor of k squared, which is in our second sum, the one over n squared. Ah, so okay, this is okay. the trick. This is the neat little thing that's gonna help us, as we shall see. Okay. I'll be honest, this bit is the bit that required, uh, uh, like, let's say, sort of a gift from above to be able to realize what you need to write down as your I, next I slide. Know what you mean. So, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> so, you know, I, I definitely wouldn't be able to come up with this myself <laughs> uh, until I was given the hint. Uh, so, so, so basically what we want to consider, and this is going to be the final part of the proof, we want to consider the sum from k equals one to infinity of one divided by k squared, the whole thing multiplied by e, and the power is going to be the sum of one over p. Yeah, and we're summing here for p less than capital N. And then we're going to let n go to infinity. I don't know how you would know to really consider that unless you were Euler or somebody else incredible. Um, so this is our gift from above. So now, thinking about this, we're going to try, and hopefully we should be able to show that, um, that the sum of one over p goes to infinity. So if capital N goes to infinity, what must that whole expression be equal to? If n goes to infinity right here, then, th yeah. 
That should be infinity, right? Then tosin should be infinity. Yes, exactly. Well done. So that's what we want to show. So our next task is can we show this sum is equal to infinity in the limit as capital N goes to infinity? All right. So just make a note for myself. I want to show that. Um, I'll put this as star. Yeah. Uh, as capital N goes to infinity, star goes to infinity. Yeah, because if we show that, then we have indeed the, the sum uh, must go to infinity because we're multiplying the exponential by something finite. Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm following. I think I'll now throw the ball over to you and let's see uh, how you might approach trying to show that. Hmm. All right, so here's the question that I have to answer now. So I want to show as n goes to infinity, that goes to infinity. And I will try to use a comparison test, maybe. I will try to compare this with something that we know, but man. Yeah. Now that's that's certainly going to be helpful. And this reminds me of maybe we had to use some geometry series if we look at this as e to some power. Mm. Maybe, but uh, I'm not quite sure how to continue from there. I may just be looking at this for a while and uh, <laughs> not know what to do, what to continue. <laughs> no problem. Like this is like I said, this is one of the the best interview questions I could find from the last fifty years. So I thought this was. You know, this is meant to be really tough. I might suggest a good starting point would be to try and simplify um, the e to the sum, because at the moment, this is a finite um, sum. So we've got e to a sum of numbers, and we can potentially write that in a slightly simpler form. Ah, so this right here becomes k goes from 1 to infinity, 1 over k squared. Um, e to the sum, let's say we have P1, P2, P1 plus P2 plus da 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 up to uh, PK. And e to the sum, we can just write it as multiplication. So we can say this is yeah. e to the P1 times e to the P2 da 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 e to the PK. And PK is just the primes up to uh, capital N, right? So this is the expression um, that we have. Yes, except this is one over all of those p's. That is correct. Yes, one <laughs> over p. It's all right. right it's, right. it's very easy to get lost in the, in this problem. Yeah, perfect. So so you've turned the sum into a product. Okay. So I will use the capital pi notation, right? K yes. is equal to one to infinity one over k square, and to write this, I will just write it as capital pi here, and yeah. I will still use that p less than n. Exactly. And we have e to the 1 over p. Okay. Yeah. So, yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. Now, now we're doing what you mentioned at the beginning about a convergence test. What do we know about the exponential function? So let's just pretend, let's just fix p, and then what is e to the 1 over p equal to? Sure. Okay, so I'll make a little note right here. We can say if we have the sum, so notice if we have the Actually, I'll write it down like this way. If we have e to the, I uh, haven't used x yet, so I'll use x. x. This right here is the series as, oh man, what should I use? <laughs> uh, I used n already, I used p, s, k, m. K, k is a good m. one. All right, oh, m, m, m. Goes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Zero yeah. to infinity, and we have x to the m over m factorial. So if we put this down here then, really? Okay, so we have the power series. So yeah. next we can put one over P here, if mm -hmm. we use that. And this converges for OX, so I can of course do that, no problem on that. And we end up with a series, and K goes from one to infinity, and we have one over K squared, and we have capital pi, and we have p is less than n, and this portion, I will just write it down in here in blue, so we have 
wow, this is the first time seeing a sum and then the pi and then the sum again. <laughs> <laughs> so this is n goes from zero to infinity and we have one over p goes here. So one over p raised to the m over m factorial. And perhaps we can simplify this a little bit by saying this is one on the top over p to the m and then times m factorial. But yeah, I will just leave it at now. Yeah. Like you've spotted, this is very complicated at this point. So what we kind of want to do is, so you, you mentioned the comparison test. So rather than taking every term in that final exponential sum, let's just take the first two, for example. Okay. So this right here will be bigger than or equal to the first two sum, right? So, okay. Exactly. So yes. I'm going to just, it will be strictly bigger than because it's positive. So, and then here we have the sum k goes from one to infinity, parentheses one over k squared, and then capital pi k, I mean p less than n, p less than capital n. So when m is equal to one, this is one, when m is equal to zero, this is one over zero factorial, which is one, so we have one. And then when m is one, we get one over p, Ooh, okay, so we have this. <laughs> okay, 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 so we have this. Wow, okay. Is that starting to look like the thing that we had earlier when we were talking about the fundamental theorem of arithmetic? Unfortunately, it's been rubbed off the board, but we had that neat result about any number being written using a k-squared factor. Ah, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh man, I wish I didn't erase that part. <laughs> so, pretty here we had n being equal to um, p1 to p i1 to the first power times p i2 to the first power da 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 p i k to the first power and then something else square like this k square. Yes. Now so, this is the same as that part. And this can be look at it as that part. Yes. So the only problem is that one, right? But we can just get rid of the one and use an inequality again. Oh, okay. So I would just say if we don't have the one, this would be bigger than the following inequality. So inequality sum k goes from one to infinity, one over k squared and capital pi uh, less than p, which is going to be this. Wow. And then 1 over p. Ah. Yes. So now this should begin to look like a series that we know diverges. This right here is the same. Well, we have to use 1 over k. k? Hold on. Hmm. Almost there, almost there, almost there. Yeah, it should, but, hmm. It's quite hard to see explicitly. You have to, I think here, you have to kind of um, almost like take a step back and think big picture. So we have, we have the sum of all square numbers. And for each one of those, we're multiplying by a product of primes. So when we let capital N go to infinity, we actually have the sum of one over K squared times every sort of possible prime. So this whole sum is greater than the sum of one over n. Right, we take the reciprocal on both sides, like this. Exactly. So in our sum, we now have something that's bigger than the sum of one over n, which of course goes to infinity. Okay, it goes from one to infinity, and all this, I will just, uh, what color, just say, oh, uh, just use black. Yeah. Which Diverges. Which diverges. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I told you it was tough. <laughs> right. Yeah. And man. I don't know exactly from what year this question was, but as I said, I asked all my colleagues and this came from someone who's been teaching at the university for over 50 years. So this is a very old interview question that used to be asked in the past. Do, so do you think that the questions that they asked in the past were hard? harder than the ones that they ask nowadays? 
I think they've just slightly changed, is what I would say. I wouldn't say they, they are necessarily harder. I think the style of the question has changed. Um, I see. Because I think in the past, a lot of the questions were tailored to, perhaps by accident, but they were tailored to students who'd sort of had training or students who'd been able to do extra, extra work outside of school. Whereas today, of course, we want to make it fair for everybody. So a lot of this is very much beyond the school syllabus. So I wouldn't ask this question in an interview now because I think this would be a bit too hard. Um, I see. But I think, I think we can all agree anyway. I think you've definitely passed the interview, Steve. <laughs> so I think, I think the first one was Gabriel's Hall was, was absolutely fantastic. And I think even this, this is an extremely difficult problem. Um, and I think, I think you did very, very well. Um, so congratulations. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and, and like I said, I, I hope you've enjoyed uh, and sort of doing these questions and I hope everyone's enjoyed watching um, and had a bit of fun with the both of us working through these problems. Yes, 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 definitely. It was definitely a lot of fun. And yeah, wow. wow. <laughs> to be honest, I've read about this before, but like at some point I just like think I gave up when I was reading through the questions. So like, <laughs> I never... It's an interesting one because there are several different ways to prove this, in fact. And, and I do recommend to anyone watching, look up the other methods of proof. But this is this, I just think I happen to find that this is a very neat uh, way to do it. So again, um, thank you very much, uh, Steve, for being my willing interviewee. Uh, it's been great fun. And thank you everyone uh, for watching. If you, as I mentioned at the beginning, if you haven't checked out Steve's amazing channel, do head over to Black Pen, Red Pen and have a look at all the awesome stuff that he's doing over there. And if you've enjoyed this video, do also please subscribe to my channel. That would be awesome. Uh, and I'll be back soon with some more maths. Take care. Thank you so much, Tom. Bye. Thanks, Steve. Bye-bye.